Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, everybody. So today we're going to cover the pros and cons of learning as the need arises. Looking forward to it, man. So, hey, it's Jackie from Copenhagen. And Joe from Dallas, Texas. Yeah, so today we're going to cover, as we just said, uh, pros and cons of learning as the need arises, right? So with it, we were talking uh, quite a lot of different things with learning, and now a lot of people are learning as they actually have the need compared to how you might have done it before, where a lot of people had to know it because there were no ways of actually searching out the information. So, so yeah, I think it's a great topic. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember as a kid when we, we got like an encyclopedia, you know, and you could, you could, you know, there's like, I don't think there were 26, you know, uh, ver uh, uh, what is it called? Not version. Um, uh, I can't think of what it's called, but um, it was uh, really funny to be able to, oh, I can here, I can go look at it. Uh, and, and anyway, it, you know, never had, you know, the stuff we have today, there's way too much information to fit into a, an encyclopedia of books that you'd print out. Yeah. So, yeah. What's the, the first one for, I see we have a pro for learning up front. What, what would, what's that one on? Yeah, it's uh, the first pro we have for learning up front here is uh, increases memory capacity. Right. If if you actually do massage your brain and and you learn quite a lot of information uh, and use it often, yeah, sure enough, then your memory capacity also increases or stays at at least some kind of constant level uh, where it might have decayed over time if you never used it. Yeah, I, I know. I read. Um, uh, uh, biography on Tesla, and it, it talked about, or he had discussed it with someone as a child. They would play memory games, and he had to memorize these crazy long, you know, sequences of numbers and letters and whatnot. But it it led to him having this incredible memory um, because he practiced it so much and could memorize things that you know just people couldn't do. And, and it and it really is something that seems rare these days that you can have an incredible memory um, at things, but. It definitely is a, something that the more you do it, the better you get at it. Yeah, I'd say I had quite a, an extensive uh, difficulty of actually learning to read and write back in the day because of stuff that happened in my life. I, I missed those uh, very important parts of, of school life where I should have learned it. So I used quite a lot of time on learning it, but instead I memorized all words, all sounds, and a lot of math as well, just because I had a need for it. I didn't want to be put back by not having it. And that also meant that I had what some doctors called near photographic memory for something like 15 years or something. And then life happened, right? But other than that, it, it shows so. I actually do know that you can absolutely have quite an increased memory capacity. Yeah, awesome. Um, now, some of the cons of that, of course, though, is we, we there is a lot of information out there, right? And we can spend a, a lot of time learning stuff that we just never need to know. I mean, it's just, how far is the earth from the sun? Do, do I, does it really matter? I mean, how am I going to use that on a daily basis? Yeah, if it's not in your... <laughs> field of work or whatever, having an, an, a guesstimate of how far the sun is from the earth, that's fine if your kid asks or whatever. But knowing the exact uh, amount might never really be something that you have a use for. Like, uh, where is Cancun on a map, right? Who who truly needs to know it if they're not the people sailing, flying, or driving there. So, yeah, there there are some stuff that you would learn but never use again. Yeah, and, and also, um, to be fair to students, because, you know, we, we, we are, of course, are still students ourselves, but um, for our kids, it's much harder to, to realize, 
you know, there's a chance you might need this knowledge, but boy, it feels like a huge waste of time, you know, when you're learning algebra two or, or trigonometry and, you know, you have no interest in this stuff, you know, the odds of you using some of those things are very low. Um, so it, boy, it's just, it just really can feel like a really big waste of time. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say one of the, the pros of learning stuff up front is that it can help you be more knowledgeable about a lot of different things. It can make you a better generalist or whatever you would say. Um, often I know a lot of small tidbits about whatever I recently read, and I'll be happy to present it in a given situation. If I had recently read uh, how quickly the um, the speed of light is, if any type of conversation where I can drop that piece of information uh, arises, I'll use that. Even uh, if it's uh, something people don't know, but it actually raises a bit of the people's assumption about how much you know. Yeah, well, yeah, and actually, which I think is where you were sort of going to some, some degree, is um, the... Uh, impression you leave with people. Like I know if you study astronomy and you can walk outside and you happen to look, oh, look, there's Cassiopeia. You know, uh, people view that as like, wow, you're smart. You know, I mean, there's some key things that people, when you can cite them, they're like, man, you, you know your stuff. It's like, well, you know, you, you happen to know a couple of things that, that really can make you stand out, right? Which is um, definitely, it's, it's good to know, right? Um, it's, it's like actually you see in movies, a lot of people can quote people verbatim you know, these, these old quotes. And I'm sure there are people that do that, but I don't think it's very often that people, you know, do that. No, no, but, but yeah, it, it can be um, a good thing. Whereas, as you said yourself, one of the cons of, of wasting a lot of time on learning stuff that you don't know if you're in a, ever going to use again. And the chance is that with the readily available stuff, um, you probably won't need to remember it because you could just Google it or ask your digital assistant or whatever. And so, so yeah. Let's see, Alexa, how far is the Earth from the Sun? The Sun is ninety-two point nine four million miles from Earth. I don't know if you could you hear that. Yeah, yeah, I could. Uh, and and again, right? It, it's a trivia question. Uh, my kid has had a fun time asking uh, Google uh, about math uh, questions. Just to see, for some reason, he does the same to the rest of the people he meet. So it, it made sense that he would do it that way as well. But yeah, uh, I know that my eight-year-old was just uh, allowed to have calculators to school for a few math problems. And I'm like, is that is that truly needed yet? We, own, we got them way later and... and our school life, and I <laughs> had a bit of a heated um, discussion with one of the other parents because she had just been a vivid. Uh, uh, she had been a pro speaker of making connected letters oh. for writing because oh. you would be able to write much quicker, um, and I never learned that cursive yeah kind of whatever uh, other types of, of uh, issues i had with reading and writing and i've never had a need for it no yeah and now i'm pretty sure i can type quicker than she can write and if i need more than one copy of it i can make that as well which is just yeah okay fair enough i had a liking for my kid being better at math in his head, and she had one for her kid being able to make cursive uh, letters. <laughs> Probably doesn't matter. Yeah, I can remember um, in junior college a guy from Mexico who, you know, I was you know I was older when I went even to junior college. I was in my early early mid twenties, and uh, this guy who was a bit older than me. He was from Mexico, and he's like, yeah, could you help me with my math? And I'm like, 
well, I don't, I don't know. It's, you know, I said, what are you doing? He's like, I'm doing long division. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I, I can, I can help you. And then I could, I could do it, but I couldn't name the numerator and denominator and, and the why, like explaining it, it had been ingrained in me, but it still to me begs the question of like, I've never needed that, you know, like I've never had to do long division. I mean, it's, when are the odds you're going to ever, it reminds me actually in, in Georgia, my master's program, it was statistics and we had to hand compute regression and it really just pissed me off. Cause I'm like, we would never do this. Like that's what our computers are for. It's ridiculous. Yeah, um, but it's one of the things where computers really do come into the picture of stuff that we probably don't have that much reason to use a lot of people are using quite a, an amount of mental energy on doing math, math, whereas the computer could just as easily do it in almost any case. But sure enough, someone needs to be able to do it. We, we need a few people who are pretty good at it. But in the general public, because at least here in Denmark, you start in school, you need to learn math because when you're done in high school or whatever, you need to have a specific level to continue on to the next part um, and so on and so forth. So as long as it's part of a school life, if you want to be able to continue on up to university and master's degrees and whatnot, uh, of course, you need to make sure that there is some kind of math level understanding um, for people not to start at scratch. If if um, preschool and middle school and stuff like that just tossed it and said, computers can do that for you, um, you might be lacking some basic knowledge that might be needed at a later stage if you actually wanted to specialize into a field where math understanding was important. So, so uh, getting back to our points that on the, the pro, one of the pros of me to know, right, especially because we're not saying you shouldn't learn how to do anything up front, right? Clearly, one of the things that, that you and I, because you and I have spoke about this several times, we should learn how to do is how to solve problems, right? How to you know, go, let me Google that for you, right? How often do you or I done that for other people? You know, I'm trying to do this and I can't figure it out. And then we just Google it. You're like, okay, that took me a minute and a half, you know, and I figured it out. Um, so learning how to do that, that's a huge pro for, it, it, you know, as long as we have access to some sort of technology, we can solve almost anything. I mean, that's crazy what we can learn how to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I'd say it. it... 100%. Uh, the, the idea of being able to solve problems um, is, of course, also one of the things with it is if you want to keep giving students problems for them to solve, it's, it's hard to just create them out of nothing. And math is a good one. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how many problems you can do with um, with uh, English as the language, but it's still an issue or still a task that needs to be solved. And thereby you either need to go and research a topic or read a book to actually learn about whatever essay you're making and stuff like that. So school as, as, a, as a thing, of, as a way of actually making people able to learn, learn problems makes lots of sense. But I'd say we, we have a con here on, on need to know as well, is you, you may not have the access needed or the time to look up solutions, right? Where, where it makes sense to know it because you either need it not in a, in a game show like manner, but you might need it in a meeting session, or you might need it in a Q&A, you might need it in other different situations where actually knowing it makes a lot of sense compared to knowing how to learn it. Yeah, I agree. You know, and that's where, and, and I think this is what it, it still boils down to. We're not saying you shouldn't 
learn any information. It, you should try to learn what's relevant for the needs you're going to have. Now, the, of course, the problem is when you're a, a school age kid, a child's age, let's say under 18, you don't really have much idea of what in the world you're going to do for a career, right? So that's very hard. But let's say, you know, when you're right when you graduate, um, and I think we talk about some like here, we call them trade schools, but there's like, you know, schools after you graduate, instead of going to quote unquote college, you can go to a trade school and learn how to be, let's say, a mechanic or a plumber or something like that yeah. um, and and make some really good money. And they teach you the skills, you're, you know, the core skills you're going to need for doing that thing, right? And and that just makes a lot of sense to me. Focus, you know, once you have a better idea of what you're going to be doing, learn the core things because, again, it, it, no matter what you're doing, I, I think almost anything, it, it could take a while to really master it, right? You don't you don't get it right away. you got to practice it for a while, but you can learn the core things you really need to know right then and there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'd say um, I'm not sure my my uh, example here will work perfectly, but I haven't done much on cars ever. I've learned a few uh, lousy ones when I was younger, but uh, in recent years only bought new ones and send them on to the shop when stuff needed to happen. But again, one of my back lights, uh, lights went out last year and I was like, <sighs> I, I can't send it to the shop for that. Yeah. So I went to YouTube, immediately found my car model and there was a nice video of how to change it. So that worked well. And I had maybe a month later, I needed to put... Um, uh, what what do you call that? A uh, hook for trailers on my car. Yeah, a hitch. Yeah, uh, yeah, a hitch. And I knew, I know uh, a mechanic. Uh, so instead of actually sending to an official shop, he could do it for me. And when he was done, he said, "Oh, so the thing we bought for your car wasn't standard for your car model. It was a universal thing." Oh. But they didn't do the mounting the same way as uh, I have a Renault um, does. But he was still able to do it because he had the general knowledge needed to just do it. Whereas I would probably not have been able to find um, a mounting of a, a car hook on YouTube uh, well enough for me to be able to do it at home. I don't know, but it's just my guess. So yeah, yeah. No, I, I get your point. Yeah. And and I, I was going to bring it up when, when you had the replace the light in your, you know, on your vehicle. Um, that's where, if that was your job, then of course you, you should know that, you know, the, the core basics, right. And it's applicable in the hitch example too, right. Is, he he clearly does this a lot, and so he's learned, especially from from actual practice. You know the the core fundamentals you got to take care of, and what what it's going to need. And now for because we're I'm looking to add solar, and the guy that's been doing all this work in my house, he's going to do the a lot of the electric work, but he's like coming up with the design, you know, and he's like I could try to learn it, but it's just easier to find someone that's done several, you know, leverage their core knowledge that. You, that's the other thing. It's like you get the benefit of someone who's had hopefully years of training. And because one of our other topics is should you really hire someone for free, right? And and what happens when you do that? And one of the things, if if people are working outside of their knowledge base, they might screw things up. And unfortunately, there's probably no way for you to know, but they don't have any experience in it because they want to learn something new. Oh, I'll do it for free. I, I'm, you know, I've never studied it. I want to do one, right? But you got to remember you're the beta, you know, for them, right? So... Yeah, getting someone who's done, you know, had experience, it, it's where it's, it does pay to have someone who's got experience in it. Yeah, it. It's one of the reason it makes sense to actually hire people is you're paying for their experience uh, some of the time, at least. Well, that's and that's one of the core things I think we've done a podcast on. I know I've done a, personally done a couple of videos on it of are you worth, you know, more you got to invest in yourself to be worth more, right? And that's part of the thing is that experience and knowledge is that's why you get paid more is you're more valuable, right? You can actually do more um, and your knowledge base is what you get paid for. So yeah, and, for and we have one of these pros of, of needing to know stuff is you don't have to worry about the future changing as as 
you're not learning and specializing too narrowly, right? Mm. Because you have maybe used, let's say, eight years of specializing yourself into a specific field, and then all of a sudden, uh, typewriter typing isn't needed anymore. Yeah. Uh, so, so if you hadn't at the same time actually learned to spell and learn to whatever other things a typist would uh, know at that time, uh, just to say it, it's not because you can't apply that to other things, but as a general idea of something that probably isn't done much anymore, people are just typing on keyboards now, but not on typewriters, well, but yeah. Let, let's go with the, uh, uh, being a, uh, a blacksmith doing horseshoeing, you know, for things. And then the car comes along and suddenly you're in a bad spot. Right. Yeah. Um, so we did have some, some, which is, I think taking it a bit, a little bit further is, you know, there are some things that just don't change that often. So things about history, um, facts that don't change general fundamentals, those things, great stuff to learn up front. Also, of course, how to solve problems, but the things you don't want to learn up front are things that change very frequently, right? Because unless you think you have an immediate need, it's going to probably change again before you start doing it. So let's, let's go back to the solar thing. Let's say I was planning one in two years from now. There's no no way I should start learning about it now because that technology is changing so much. Whatever I learn is going to be outdated. Yeah, I, I recently had a discussion at work where many of the people I know in work settings are maybe on their set, second education or their second type of uh, work uh, situation. Uh, recently, I know my my Danish teacher for my, my son, she was originally into some kind of graphic education and now she's a teacher. So she has shifted and I have shifted and a lot of people have shifted from their original start to where they are now. And I believe that in the, uh, the nearest future, you'll probably have to shift one more time just because of the ever-changing landscape in office environments and banks and wherever, financials and who knows what, Um, just because we can't rely on an education we took uh, maybe 45 years ago. Some may be able to do it, but for the most general part, you might need to go back to school for a few years or take an extensive amount of courses and whatever, uh, or be able to self-learn uh, quite a lot of stuff for some kind of immediate future. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, let us know what you guys think, if there's something else you'd want to bring up on this and, you know, how do you guys, especially with Jackie just mentioned, when, uh, you know, do you let yourself go and stay focused in your area over long periods of time and then you suddenly decide you're going to learn, you know, a new thing? Or do you, is it more of an ongoing thing where you're constantly trying to keep, you know, updated on your technology and um, staying where you don't, we wouldn't have to take a two-year hiatus to, to learn something new. So uh, let's know what we think. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. Yeah, bye. Three... One, two, three, I don't know, three, 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 <laughs> three, two, one.